Hello and welcome to our 2019 A to J Author Training Series. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Author's Project Manager. The A to J Author portion of this training series is four videos long. In video one, we covered how document assembly works in general, how A to J Author and Hot Docs work together to create a complete document assembly package. In video two, we gave an overview of A to J Author and basic question design. In video three, we covered macros, functions, repeat loops, and advanced conditions. And in video four, we're covering the A to J Author document assembly tool, or the A to J DAT. You can find all of the videos I described on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash A to J Author. This is video four in the series. Today we will cover the A to J Author document assembly tool. There are two ways in A to J Author to create templates. You can either create a PDF template or a text template. Both have the same outcome though. Both a text template and a PDF template produce a PDF document when finally assembled. The difference is in how you create the original template and how you automate on top of it. What is the same for both of them is that each require a new destination. So the new destination DAT options are assemble, generate PDF document, and assemble, generate PDF and process form. The first one, assemble, generate PDF document, generates the document for the end user when they hit that final button, but it does not close the browser window. The user themselves will need to close the interview window in order to complete or finish the interview. The second option, assemble, generate PDF and process form, generates the document for the end user to their local machine, and posts the answer file to the server in order to be saved. Assemble, generate PDF and process form is similar to success process form. So those of you that have worked with A to J author before as a front end for Hot Docs, and you are going to be hosting either on LawHelp Interactive or A to J.org or hosting yourselves, and you want to save and capture the end user's answer file in order to allow them to come back later or see their saved answer file or process it in your case management form, this is the one you're going to need to use. So assemble generate PDF just creates the document for the end user. Assemble generate PDF and process form creates the document for the end user and sends the user's answer file on to somewhere else. So the first one we'll talk about today are text templates. They're basically starting from scratch. If you think about a Google form or a Google doc, how it's blank when you start it and you add elements to create the ultimate document, that's similar to our text template. So when you uh, create a text template, when you click uh, text, create text template, this screen opens up within your A to J guided interview, and you're able to start adding elements to your template to build the completed one. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do are, uh, is go to the template options. Template options control your entire template. So here's where you can change the font for the entire template the font size, any special section numbering. You can make this specific template conditional, so only use the template if, for example, have children TF is true. So this template maybe is only applicable if the end user has children, and otherwise they don't need this template at all. Say it's um, a divorce and you have to come up with a child custody plan, and you don't need it if they don't have children. So you can make this entire template conditional within a packet of templates um, in within a guided interview. Here's also where you can add in a custom header or a custom footer. You can allow it to display on the first page or not. You have full editing options um, within the header and the footer as well. Once you've created all of your options for the entire template and you've either made the header or the footer or, or not, you move on to adding elements. So within a text template in A to J, you can add a section rich text, a page break, if else, and repeat loops. The most important one and the one you're gonna spend the most time in is likely the rich text editor. The rich text editor allows you to add in text and variables and include formatting options as well. When you hover over each of the icons which, within the editor, it tells you what that icon can do for your, your text. So for example, the most important one that you're likely gonna focus on is inserting a variable. When you click the P, the insert an I, a variable icon, the variable icon selector will open up for you. When you start typing, 
A to J will filter the variables that you have in your A to J guided interview by the letters you've typed, the characters you've typed in, and then you're able to select the one that is most appropriate that you want to insert. When you have picked the one you want, you select it, you highlight it, and you hit the OK button. This will insert it into your rich text, and then you'll be able to combine both text and variables. The next element to discuss is if-else conditionals. If-else conditionals let you conditionally insert sections, rich text, or page breaks based on whether a variable is true or false, if the value held by a variable meets another value that you're, you set ahead of time, or several different conditions. You can also add in else sections, so if the first part is not, if that first condition is not met, then the else clause will be displayed to the end user. As I mentioned, if else can hold either section breaks, rich text, page breaks, and repeat loops within an if else conditional. So you can have these inserted only if some condition is met or not met. Here's an example, a screenshot of when there is an if and an else, both have rich text, alternative text. So uh, in this example, if the end user has notified the landlord before about an issue, then the text will say, I have notified you previously, etc. Otherwise, it will say, this is my first notice to you. So this is a way in which you can have alternative text based on some condition that your end user indicates whether they need the first or the second. We also allow repeat loops within the A to J text template. Repeat loops can repeat either for a specific number of times that you set ahead of time or based on a variable. Um, so child count or asset count, a counting variable can be used to set a repeat loop. So however many times the end user has gone through the loop, then A to J will evaluate that counting variable and determine the number of times this repeat loop in the template needs to display. The repeat loop can either be a table, as shown here, a list, as shown here, and you can determine different kinds of bullets and items to repeat, or it can be text that needs to be repeated based on, say, the number of children um, or specific information. So you can have either a table, um, a list, or text repeated within an A to J text template. When you're done with a text template, you always want to test assemble. So the way to do that is once you have finished your interview, click Save Template, and then click Test Assemble. And up will pop the test assemble options that allow you to load answers. When you click Load Answers, your local machine's file search will pop up and you can use an answer file that you have previously saved from running through the guided interview in preview mode. You save that answer when you're going through preview, um, it downloads to your local machine, and then when you're ready to test assemble, you click that test assemble button, load answers, navigate to where you've saved it, and then click open, and your document will download. The next uh, kind of template to talk about are PDF templates. This is when you wanna start with an existing PDF. You already have the court form or the paper that needs to be filled out. Perhaps it has set formatting, it has complicated boxes and check boxes and uh, captions, and you don't wanna to have to replicate that with the text editor as in a text template. The new way with A to J is that you can start with an existing PDF document. You simply uh, click PDF template, create PDF template, and this is the main landing screen that you'll see. You then are wanna, you want to click Upload PDF. Again, your local um, search file search will pop up. You can select where you have saved that PDF template and click Open. Once you do so, it'll load the PDF, representation of the PDF, into the editor, and you'll be able to add variables in logic on top of the PDF itself. It handles check boxes. You can have different sort of check mark styles, check box, checks, X's, circle with the X, circle with a check mark in it, completely filled in circle, box with an X, box with a check, and completely filled in box. You can have it pass either a check mark, one of the check mark styles, or a specific value if you need to, if it's a multiple choice variable. It also handles addendum and overflow text. So if you have a section that says perhaps, why are you filling out the form? 
and you believe that the end user may go over the four lines that are allotted by the court in the PDF document, you can tell A to J how to handle the overflow. It can either append just what doesn't fit on the lines, it can append all the text to an addendum if there would be overflow, or it can ignore it and cut it off. If you're using an addendum, A to J will create an addendum for you and you're uh, able to add a label to that addendum to indicate what this section was. A to J also handles true-false checkboxes. So if a variable is based is either yes or no, um, you can pass the value, one of the checkmark styles on the left. If the value is true, it, that's the default, and you can pass one of the checkmark styles. But if you want to pass the checkmark if the variable is false, you can indicate that by checking the box as well. Just like text templates, uh, PDF templates have template options. So you can change the font for the text that will be printed on the PDF, the font name and font size. You can configure the addendum if you wanna make a custom addendum. You can make this template conditional also. So only assemble if assemble TF is true um, or have kids TF is true. Some sort of condition is met or not met that you only want uh, this template to show. In this template option section is also the test assemble and the save button. And it gives you an indicator of when the last time it was saved. When it is saving, if you hit save, this little green circle will go white. And when it turns green again, you know that, that your version has saved to the server. It also handles multi-page documents. So if you need to, you can automate on top of multiple page documents. You can also swap out the underlying documents. So if you create an A to J template and then the court changes the form in a year, instead of having to re-automate the entire form, perhaps they just moved one checkbox or one signature line, you can re-upload a new underlying document, a base PDF, and replace that, but all of the existing automation on top of it, all the variables and all the work you've put into it stays, and you just have to move things around to handle the new document. To add variables on top of your PDF template, A to J does some of the work for you in figuring out the size of the line. So very simply, you can just double click on the line and A to J does, uh, the A to J algorithm in the back does the math to figure out the height and length of the, f of the field. If it's not correct, you can always make adjustments, either increasing the height of the variable, lengthening it, shortening it, um, or decreasing the size of the variable field. But generally it does a fairly good job for most lines. Sometimes you do have to do a little adjustment, but it's fairly simple to move the field boxes around. Now to assign a variable to this blank field, you right click into it and the assign variable field pops up. The great part about the PDF template is that you can create variables on the fly. You don't already have to have the variable within your A to J variables tab. If you do have the variable in, you can start typing the name of the variable and A to, A to J will sort the variables that it does know about um, alphabetically, matching the characters that you've already typed. But if you have one that isn't already in there and doesn't match any of the known variables, you can create the variable right here on the fly, either text, true, false, number, date, or multiple choice. And when you hit assign, it both assigns that variable to this field and it creates that variable and puts it into your variables tab. So when you hit assign, now when it turns blue, it says the name of the variable and it indicates that it is assigned to this field. So you can see the difference between an unassigned variable, yellow, and an assigned variable, blue. There are a couple keyboard shortcuts that are built into text or into PDF templates and you can access them by hitting control and the forward slash or command and the forward slash uh, for a Mac. So this allows you to delete uh, selected boxes, move boxes around as you're drawing boxes over checkbox uh, check areas. Those can be a little bit difficult, but this lets you automatically do some of that uh, without having to use your mouse. Finally, we have additional resources. To learn more about the A to J Author Document Assembly Tool, you can check out Chapter 15 of our Authoring Guide. It's available under the Learn tab on a to j author.org, or you can go to www.a to j author.org slash content slash a to j dash authoring dash guide. 
We also have additional sample exercises for you to practice your authoring skills. We have over a dozen now that range in complexity from a 15 to 30 minute exercise to a longer three to four hour complete um, test of your authoring skills. So you can also find those under the Learn tab by navigating to the sample exercises, or you can go to www.a2jauthor.org slash content slash sample dash exercises dash learn dash a2j dash author. As always, feel free to reach out to me with any authoring questions that you have. My email is jessica at cali.org. That's jessica at cali.org. Thanks for watching the videos.